Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to my 30 day challenge where I do 30 videos in 30 days with one per day. And we are talking about the book by John Maxwell called Failing Forward. So the chapter I'm going to talk about now is going to be chapter, let's see, chapter three, which is titled, If You Failed, Are You a Failure? And the quote that starts off the chapter is by Grantland Rice, who was a very prolific writer back in the 19th century. And his quote is, failure isn't so bad if it doesn't attack the heart. Success is all right if it doesn't go to the head. So how many times have you either heard someone or said to yourself, what's wrong with me? Am I really a failure? And in the first section of this chapter, the author talks about the importance of keeping a good perspective on things, not looking at yourself as a failure, but to expect that you're going to have adversity. There's things that are going to happen. And in order to be successful, to get to where you want to go, it's important to be able to overcome adversity and mistakes. If you label yourself a failure, that's going to make you stuck and not want to move forward. So the perspective of I am a failure is going to keep you from moving forward. But the idea that I failed at something will help you move forward. I give the example of a very well-known writer, Irma Bombeck, was one of the top humor writers of the 20th century and was honored in many different ways, published lots of different books and was uh, honored in lots of ways. But during all during that time, she had lots of trials to deal with. She had faced cancer, kidney failure. She uh, had two miscarriages and um, but she persevered. She had a saying, she had a quote that said, tell yourself, I'm not a failure. I just failed at something. There's a big difference. A quote that I remember from Zig Ziglar is where he says, failure is an event, not a person. And every successful person failed at some point, but did not label themselves as a failure. One of Mozart's earlier works was totally rejected and basically said there's too, uh, too many notes. Um, Van Gogh, all of his paintings now are worth lots of money, but he only sold one during his lifetime. And then Einstein was told that he would never amount to much. So overcoming those, I guess, naysayers or people who say you're never going to amount to much, the only way you won't amount to much is if you just stop trying. So when we talk about failing forward, what exactly is that? And um, John Maxwell talks about failing forward. Let me see if I can find my place here. He says, I place a high value on praising people, especially children. In fact, I believe that people live up to your level of expectations, but I also believe that you have to base the praise on truth. Don't make up nice things to say just to build someone's self-esteem. That's false self-esteem. The approach that he uses to encourage and to lead others is to value people, praise effort, and reward performance. You want to reward someone for doing something wrong or not finishing a job. So he often doesn't reward himself until after a job is finished. And no matter where he fails or how many mistakes he makes, he doesn't let it devalue his worth as a person. There's a saying that says God uses people who fail because there aren't any other kind around. We're all going to face that. So there's seven abilities needed to fail forward. These are seven abilities of achievers that enable them to fail, but not take it personally and keep moving forward. Number one is that achievers reject rejection. Author James Allen says, a man is literally what he thinks, 
his character being the complete sum of all his thoughts. That's why it's important to keep your thoughts in the right track. If you don't base your self-worth on performance, that enables you to keep going. Instead of saying, I am a failure, they just say, I made a mistake or I missed that one. Number two is achievers see failure as temporary. There are lots of examples of people who had temporary setbacks but went on to great accomplishments. In, Harry, in 1922, Harry Truman was 38 years old and unemployed and in debt. But by 1945, he was the president of the United States. So when achievers fail, they see it as a momentary event, and not a lifelong epidemic. Number three, achievers see failures as isolated incidents. <clears throat> when achievers fail, they just see it as something that just happened, not going to happen forever. It's not personal. Number four, achievers keep expectations realistic. So, yeah, so there's an example of, and it goes back to baseball, where one player might go five for five. And they gave an example on his very first game in a big league game was for Hank Aaron. He went 0 oh, for 5. Now, if he'd have thought, oh, I'm a failure, I'm going to quit, then he would have never gotten anywhere. But as it, as it was, he turned out to be one of the greatest players in the history of the game. Number five, achievers focus on strengths. If you have a weakness and it's a character flaw, that's something to work on. But if you have some other weakness, it's best to work on things or continue to focus on the things that you're good at and that will keep you failing forward number six achievers vary approaches to achievement that means if you if you fail at something try it a different way uh, try a different approach to it number seven achievers bounce back so in life sometimes the outcome is not always what you want. I can uh, definitely see that as a daily thing. You go somewhere and you don't realize the traffic's gonna be bad. So you get there late and it doesn't turn out to be uh, wherever you're going. Turns out uh, being late was, was not good, but you just realize what happened and go on from there. And one of the stories that he quotes is one of a a guy named Daniel Rudiger. His nickname was Rudy. If you ever seen the, the film based on his life, uh, he had lots of failures, but his, his goal was to play football for the Notre Dame football team. And he had lots and lots of struggles along the way. So to sum up, the third step for failing forward is to remove the U from failure. If you've been thinking of yourself as a failure, try to break out of that negative thinking pattern. Examine your expectations for some area in your life. Write them down. Are they realistic? How many mistakes should you expect to make before you succeed? The higher your goal, the more mistakes you have to make to get there. Find new ways to do your work. Brainstorm 20 new approaches. Focus on your strengths. Vow to bounce back no matter how many times you fall down. Just make it a decision that you're going to pick yourself back up and keep going. Okay, so that covers chapter three. In the next section, we'll talk about um, the, the chapter is entitled, You're Too Old to Cry, But It Hurts Too Much to Laugh. And the quote from Viktor Frankl, fear makes come true that which one is afraid of. So I will see you in the next video.